The beauty of the animal kingdom is universally celebrated. The regal, the elegant, and graceful. But what about those animals who, in our eyes, are not part of that beauty parade? Anatomy doesn't have to be attractive to be well adapted. Join us as we explore the weird, the wacky, and the downright bizarre. Even Mother Nature's most malformed looking children make sense in the context of their environment. They are masters of disguise, ultimate predators, nocturnal freaks, and sexy beasts. Every proboscis has a purpose, every wrinkle a reason. There is perhaps nothing as useful as being ugly. Adaptation is the key to survival. And more often than not, natural selection favours function over form. Evolution, it seems, is nature's blind sculptor. The Galapagos Islands, Ecuador home to some of the planet's most unusual and unique species. The famous naturalist Charles Darwin visited these islands on his voyage of the Beagle. His observations here helped develop his theory of evolution through natural selection. A theory that may help explain the weirdest of animal adaptations. But even nature-loving Darwin described one of the native species as hideous-looking. The Galapagos marine iguana. Darwin wasn't kidding. But such revolting features not only help the species to survive, but thrive. Sunning himself on a rock, this large male iguana warms his cold-blooded body. And there's more to him than meets the eye. Despite his brutish face and scaly hide, he is in fact a pioneer. The Galapagos marine iguana is the world's only sea-going lizard. He may look the part of a vicious dragon, but he's actually a vegetarian. Soaking up the sun's rays, he watches on as other marine iguanas graze on seaweed and scrape algae from rocks. Their flat snouts and sharp teeth enable them to remove the algae, their long claws clinging tightly to the rock as they resist the outgoing tide. With thousands of iguanas on the hunt, competition for food is tough. Charged by the midday sun, the large male moves off. He's on his way to greener pastures, but getting there won't be easy. While all marine iguanas can swim, only about 5% will brave deeper waters in search of food. He's joined on his quest by only the biggest and boldest of males. Diving up to 10 meters below the surface, his long flat tail helps him power through turbulent waters. Food here is abundant. But in these deep waters, unseen hazards lurk.
he's attracted unwanted attention from a couple of curious sea lions. It seems these predators are trying to work out whether he is too ugly to be considered food. Or perhaps they're just looking for a friend to play with. Either way, this particular sea lion is annoyingly persistent. And in this game of tug-of-war, the stakes are high. At least for the iguana. A last-ditch effort frees him of the sea lion's playful appetite. With neighbours like these, that algae in the shallows is starting to look better and better. Having expended so much energy, this solar panel needs to recharge. And in these parts, sunbathing is a team sport. Vacant real estate is hard to come by. And living in a tight-knit community has its downsides. Bless you. That was unfortunate. Bless you. Oh, dear. Like the rest of his fellows, his seaweed-based diet results in consuming a great deal of salt. If left to build up in his bloodstream, it would become toxic. To counter this, he has evolved a nasal gland, which allows him to excrete concentrated salt crystals in big, powerful sneezes. Occasionally, the strong onshore wind returns the salty snot to its sender. Not the most charming of looks. Darwin described the Galapagos marine iguana as most disgusting, but these unique reptiles also gave him pause for thought. While unorthodox, these unique adaptations and pioneering survival strategies began to make sense to Darwin. And the spark of an intriguing concept was ignited. And for this, we have much to be thankful for. Bless you, Galapagos marine iguana. Bless you. While sneezing has ensured the survival of one species, for another, it is definitely not an act to be taken lightly. In the lush forests on the island of Borneo, Southeast Asia, there lives a prime specimen of the primate world. With ginger fur, a red coat, is it a handsome orangutan? Not with that nose. The proboscis monkey. This large male is on the move. His bulbous nose is not a facial deformity, but one of his most functional features. That big hooter really helps him hoot. This vast nose allows him to create an echo chamber to amplify his calls. helping him impress females and intimidate rivals. He's surprisingly nimble for such a rotund fellow. With that massive belly, it's a feat of nature he can move at all. His swollen stomach is actually a special adaptation allowing him to survive on a diet of young leaves and unripened fruit. Bacteria in his gut aid the breakdown of plant matter, producing gas and bloating the belly to drum-like proportions. Put simply, he's a gas balloon.
The females are considerably smaller, about half the size, with daintier noses. At least by comparison. Today, there's more activity in the canopy than usual. These females are on the lookout for a mate. It's time for him to strut his stuff. But he's not alone. With more than bragging rights on the line, he bounds through the trees, making huge leaps from branch to branch. He's quite the acrobat. Others, eh, not so much. A fall here can mean more than just losing a lady's attention. Sharing the neighbourhood with a lurking crocodile leaves no room for error. But with webbed feet and a knack for swimming, this young rival male narrowly avoids becoming a snack. Maybe next time. While some are lucky in the water, others are lucky in love. Unlike his belly-flopping rival, it looks like he's caught her eye. Aside from his acrobatic prowess, it's really his nose that makes him stand out. By standing out. Though many would find it unattractive, this female proboscis monkey could not disagree more. It seems that when it comes to seduction, size really does matter. For some males, it can grow to be a quarter of the length of their body. His nose, that is. Unwilling to admit defeat, the other males continue to vie for attention. But what's all this ruckus about? Can't these males find another mate? Well, no, actually. In the world of the proboscis monkey, when it comes to mating, it's winner takes all. In the competition for breeding rights, this lucky Lothario has won by a nose. And in doing so, he not only claims this female, but all the females in this troop. And now this newly crowned dominant male will form a harem group of up to 20 females. It's good to be king. But what about all the other males? Well, for now, they're relegated to a bachelor troop. But that won't stop them trying to steal the limelight from the new king. They'll continue to try and outswing, outjump, and outhonk each other. But from the other side of the river. Who would have thought that a facial feature so strange would play such a large part in the social hierarchy of this forest-dwelling primate? And it seems the neighbours will just have to put up with it. In evolution, selective pressures are responsible for some surprising adaptations. While one species of monkey considers big to be beautiful, there's another 
that firmly believes less is more. High in the mountainous forests of western China, winter temperatures are starting to plummet. Despite the bitter cold, some monkeys are hanging around. But evidently, they've misplaced their noses. It seems it's all in the name. The golden snub-nosed monkey. This dominant male golden snub-nosed monkey leads his family through the frosty forest in search of food. It goes without saying that his face isn't his most redeeming feature. Although his fetching fur coat looks cosy, and the golden colour adds a dash of glam, perhaps a welcome distraction from his missing nose. His supposed shortcomings can be attributed to the bitter cold of the winter months. In these icy temperatures, bodily extremities often succumb to frostbite. Ultimately, it's one less appendage to fall off. And it seems his naked nostrils don't dissuade the ladies. As a dominant male, he claims up to four female partners. And together with their offspring, they form a tight-knit family group that their survival depends on. Because nothing keeps you warmer than a hug. These clusters are a clever tactic used in the colder months to help regulate body temperature. Cozy. Is it time for a snowball fight? Never mind. Dad's found a piece of fruit that's been snap frozen. A rare winter treat. But it doesn't look like he's going to share. And with the abundance of the summer's fruity bounty a distant memory, the resources of the desolate winter months are hard fought. For the most part, he and his family have to survive on a bland diet of pine needles and bark. Enjoy that fruit while you can, Dad. It's gonna be a long winter. And now, with the arrival of strangers, Father is forced to defend his turf. And when you wear a continuous frown, things tend to escalate quickly. though he eventually sees off the competition. And as for the babies, monkey see, monkey do. But following in Dad's footsteps isn't always easy. These long legs make him a world-class long jumper and allow him to run with bipedal steps. Keep up, kids. Perhaps by keeping his hands out of the snow, he can protect his fingers from frostbite. 
And it's just as well, because the golden snub-nosed stumpy-fingered monkey just doesn't have the same ring to it. From one climate extreme to another, in a sea of glamour, there's one grotesque looking species that stands out from the crowd. The African plains are home to some of the planet's most spectacular bird species. A true avian beauty pageant. The sleek, the elegant, the sophisticated. But in these parts, you need more than just good looks to survive. Which is just as well. The Marabou Stork. Amidst a sea of razzle-dazzle, this beastly bird looks out of place. But looks can be deceiving. She's perfectly adapted to life in this most hostile of regions. At a distance, it's not hard to be impressed by her majesty. With a wingspan of nearly three meters, she can soar regally through the air. Up close, however, her large wedge-like beak resembles an ice pick. And her bald head reveals a patchy complexion. She walks with an ungainly hunched gait. While not the most glamorous of struts, she's managed to attract the attention of this handsome male. That's not a chip on his shoulder. It's actually an inflatable air sac, a sign of being healthy and virile. Clearly well hung, the large balloon-like sac under his chin clinches the deal. They're a match made in heaven. It's not long before the pair produces a brood. Perhaps trying to avoid the inevitable, their young offspring do what they can with what little fluff they have up top. That's quite the comb over. As a wading bird, Dad is an adept fisherman. His long legs and extended beak are perfect genetic adaptations. In drier seasons, however, these waterways shrink dramatically, forcing the daintier wading bird species to migrate. But when times get tough, the well-adapted marabou stork simply looks to the plains. After all, these savannas are abundant in other potential sources of protein. And today, meat is on the menu. Large, plain-dwelling herbivores like zebra and wildebeest are some of Dad's favourites. The hunt is on. Though Dad isn't the one who goes in for the kill. He leaves that to the apex predators. Like all good scavengers, he and his family wait their turn. 
Feasting on carrion can be a perilous task. Competition is fierce, and there's a clear pecking order, so to speak. After the lions have had their fill, the hyenas get the first leftovers. Followed by vultures aggressively staking their claim. They're not big on sharing. Evidently, table manners aren't a concern in these parts. Unlike the vulture, his beak isn't designed for tearing flesh. So while mum and dad might try to sneak a tidbit or two, the kids wait on the peripheries, quick to pounce on any remnants that have been softened up for consumption. At the end of the day, he and his family are left to clean up the ragged remains, leaving little but bone behind. It's for this very reason the marabou stork is also known as the undertaker bird. Coated in dried blood, Mum's bald head is a far cry from the charm of the prettier birds in the region. But being able to survive the open savanna in times of famine... Perhaps that chip on the shoulder is warranted. In the animal kingdom, adapting to environmental ebbs and flows is the key to survival. Of course, evolution is a slow process, and there is one species more than happy to embrace that fact. Deep in the steamy rainforests of South America, the trees are alive with movement. Day-to-day -day activity is a race for survival. Although some animals prefer to live their life in the slow lane. The three-toed sloth. The three-toed sloth is so called cool because, well, it has three toes and it's unbelievably lazy. Here we have a young female with deep-set eyes and droopy facial features. She's not the most striking of creatures to be found in the jungle. Nevertheless, she's got a big day ahead of her. It's Tuesday and she has an important weekly expedition to attend to. Not just yet, though. She needs five more minutes. Her long claws help with both climbing and just hanging out. She's almost like a living hammock. Averaging a distance of just 38 metres a day, she won't be setting any land speed records. It seems that she's so slow, she can't even outrun algae. The algae green tinge on her coat helps with camouflage. And given she's unlikely to outrun, well, anything, being hard to spot by predators can only be a good thing. Her thick coat is not only stained by algae, but also infested with insects. She's like a moving, lumbering garden, a hanging basket, perhaps. She even has her own species of moth, the sloth moth. 
In return for sanctuary, these moths help keep her hairy horticulture in check. Like all good mothers, she knows how to provide for her offspring. In this case, by passing her algae on to her tightly clinging baby. Sharing is caring. After all, camouflage is the gift that keeps on giving. It's amazing how time flies when you're doing nothing. It's time for her weekly excursion. All the way to the bottom of the tree. And to the toilet. She leaves a little something for those sloth moth larvae. Their eggs are laid in the poo which will provide a nutritious treat for the hatchlings. All done. Now for the long climb back up. Having jettisoned a week's worth of fertiliser, she's feeling decidedly lighter and somewhat hungry. Back in the canopy, she feeds almost exclusively on leaves and twigs. That is, if she can move fast enough to catch them. Those leaves can be quite elusive. Once snared, she nips off the wiry foliage using her hard lips and grinds them up a multi-chambered stomach filled with a cellulose-digesting bacteria that helps break down her fibrous diet. She may be the only creature named after a deadly sin, but her laziness is a survival strategy. As her food is hard to digest and lacking nutrition, sleep plays an important role in maintaining the energy levels necessary for survival. They say you shouldn't let life pass you by. But it looks like she's more than happy to do just that. For some, life in the slow lane has its advantages. But others have evolved to be quite sprightly. As darkness falls on the islands of Southeast Asia, something small and fluffy is moving through the trees. My, what big feet you have. What big ears you have. What big... Whoa! This crazy-looking critter is actually a distant cousin of the lemur. And one of the world's smallest primates. The Tarsier. A pint-sized nocturnal predator. This female is emerging to commence her night's feeding, appearing to be in a constant state of shock. Those disproportionately large eyes are her unusual adaptation to life in the dark. 
While the eyes of most nocturnal mammals are covered with a reflective layer to help raise ambient light levels, she takes a different approach. Bigger is better. Her retinas are almost entirely covered with rod cells, meaning that her colour vision is poor. But she's able to see exceptionally well in dim light. Each eye is even larger than her brain. In fact, they're so big that they can't even rotate within her eye sockets. Not to worry. Party trick to overcome this limitation. She spends most of her life in the canopy. Those spindly fingers of hers are well adapted to climbing, each digit punctuated with a padded tip, and some bearing claws for additional support. Her forelimbs are rather short, but her hind legs are more than twice the length of her head and body combined. Perfect for pouncing. And as Tarsiers are the only fully carnivorous primates on Earth, she pounces with purpose. An agile acrobat, she's capable of leaps up to five or six metres. She bounds from tree to tree in search of insects, her cuisine of choice. It seems she has a particular taste for mantis. Or perhaps it's a case of eye envy. Either way, she seems to be enjoying her meal. Moving her large radar-like ears independently, she gauges her surroundings pinpointing even the slightest of movements. For such a little thing, she's got a big appetite. But her eyes may be bigger than her belly. Quite literally. Enhanced with impeccable nocturnal vision, razor-sharp hearing, and a powerful pounce, this little critter embodies natural selection at its finest. Packed with formidable features, she's a tiny assassin, inflicting fluffy death from above. However, there are some disadvantages to nocturnal adaptation. Because occasionally, her food fights back. <laughs> She didn't see that coming. As the sun sets, while one species gets to work, there is another unique creature that is just as efficient in its nocturnal activities. Mostly while it sleeps. The desert, in the heart of the Australian outback. A harsh and unforgiving environment. But there is one truly heavy metal reptile that calls it home. The thorny devil. Quite the prickly customer, this male thorny devil is built for survival. While not the cuddliest of creatures, he's exceptionally well adapted to life in this most arid of regions. 
His defence capabilities are second to none, covered from head to toe in thorny armour. Predators would think twice before trying to swallow such a formidable bundle of spikes. As an additional defence mechanism, positioned on the back of his neck, he's developed a false head. Made of soft tissue, he'll offer this small bulbous growth to any would-be predator, obscuring his real head within that impregnable ball of spikes. Better safe than sorry. But it's safer still to not be seen at all. And this thorny devil has mastered the art of blending in. He's able to change colour to adapt to his surroundings. But why the funky strut? When he walks, he rocks. Moving back and forth, he looks like a plant blowing in the wind, helping him stay concealed from hungry eyes. It may sound far from complimentary, but prickly and weedy is a winning combination. There's nothing like rocking out to work up an appetite. Like all thorny devils, he has a rather monotonous diet, consisting of ants and... and only ants, actually. Given that these ants are one of the few food sources in abundance out here, it's a wise culinary choice. Here, we see him taking a more relaxed approach to dining. Positioning himself near an ant trail, he simply waits for prey to pass right under his nose before lapping them up with his sticky tongue. It's like a conveyor belt at a sushi restaurant. Considering that he can consume up to 750 ants in a single meal, at a rate of one ant per second. This tactic is more ingenious than lazy. In this hostile environment, minimizing the amount of energy used to gather food is another smart survival tactic. He grinds the hard ant shells to pieces using specially modified teeth. The bottom teeth fit neatly between two teeth on the top of his mouth to create a shearing tool. Instant ant puree. Tasty. With dinner over, he's worked up a thirst This heat is relentless. In these parts, temperatures frequently soar above 40 degrees Celsius. And water is scarce. So when he does get the chance to rehydrate, he needs to make the most of it. This is more than just a refreshing bath. And those spines are used for more than defense. Using capillary action, the water is sucked up his body, traveling along the grooves between his thorns and into his waiting mouth. In order to maximize surface area, his thorns play a large part in this process turning him into a living straw. He uses the same technique to harvest dew from the air as it condenses on his body overnight. 
Now that is energy efficient. More than just a pretty face, the thorny devil's exceptionally well-adapted features allow him to thrive during work, rest, and play. For some species, an imposing display is sufficient for defence. For others, such outlandish features have garnered an inauspicious reputation. Off the eastern coast of Africa lies Madagascar, one of the world's largest islands. It's a hotspot of evolutionary eccentricity. Many species living here can be found nowhere else on Earth. But it's not until after dark that the real freaks come out to play. And there's none freakier than this little critter. The Ai-Ai. He's a nocturnal predator. And as darkness falls on the jungle, it's time to hunt. He looks like a creature made up of spare parts. Ears like a bat, teeth like a rat, a tail like a cross between a cat's and a chimney brush, and fingers like, well, like nothing else. Local superstitions say that seeing an eye eye is a sign of impending doom. A sign of bad luck, or even death. Some villagers may even try to kill him on sight. Perhaps that's why he seems to be giving mankind the middle finger. Further enhancing his notorious reputation are his large lamp-like eyes that help him see in the dark. But unlike other nocturnal hunters, when it comes to locating prey, his well-equipped night vision plays only a small role. His hunting methods are as unique as they are creepy. On the prowl, he uses long, curved claws to stealthily skitter through the treetops. Pausing every now and then to use that long middle finger to tap on tree trunks. He's seeking out the insect larvae hiding within the hollows. Cocking those satellite dish ears forward, he's listening and feeling for any movement beneath the bark. Knock, knock. Anyone home? Able to detect even the slightest of movements, he hones in on his potential meal. Time to unleash those ever-growing large buck teeth. Tearing into the bark, he needs to make a hole large enough for him to probe the cavity beneath with his middle finger. Those big yellow eyes are of no use here. Closing them, he focuses on probing with that long and nimble feeler. The labyrinth of passageways beneath the bark isn't easy to navigate. If the grub can find a safe corner, it may just survive. But the I.I.'s Swiss Army fingers should never be underestimated. 
key to the success of this dexterous digit is a ball and socket joint, enabling it to swivel in any direction. It appears that there's nowhere left to hide. Just what he was looking for, a midnight snack. While it may look like he was assembled from odds and ends, every feature of the eye eye plays its part in keeping him well fed. And striking fear into the hearts of the local villagers. We live on a planet that is home to some truly majestic, exquisite creatures. And some interesting creature features. While some of these animals look as though Mother Nature has played some cruel prank on them, these strange specimens couldn't disagree more. Be it creepily big eyes, even bigger noses, or just a body covered in terrifying spikes. These animals have their freaky features to thank for survival. Proving once and for all that function wins out over form. <laughs>